This is Molly busy at work in her new job in a bookstore, reading. She's not supposed to be reading. She's supposed to be working for her new boss, shown here at Wright, reading. There's something insidious about all this reading. For one thing, you do it by yourself, all alone, unaccompanied. And people need company, family, hearth, someone to greet them when they come home weary from their labors, which you can forget about if everybody's off by themselves, reading. Tell me this, whatever happened to square dances and jamborees and spelling bees and hootenannies and sing-alongs? Let's drop those books and start baking pies. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get carried away. I just feel very strongly about this. see a thing, Miss Dodd. None of my business if you want to break into somebody's premises that ain't your own. Davy, I heard noises. So you thought you'd help yourself to some stray antiques and bric-a-brac. Understandable. Now, Davy, you cannot tell me that you're not interested in what goes on in there. Me? I choose to ignore the inmates of this asylum. Well, you don't ignore me. But only because of the deep and abiding physical attraction you and me have for each other. It makes me foolishly defy my better judgment. Gangway! Again? Finally, you're going to have to vacate the elevator. Uh, the man's name is Shimkin. Shimkin is his name. Isn't that right, sir? You know, what is going on here? Does this man have a heart attack every day? It's you two, isn't it? You live in there. You've got like some sort of weird dormitory for paramedics. You're holding this poor man hostage so you can practice on him, aren't you? Lady, you better keep that information to yourself. Come on, let's go. Let's move it. Thank you. Okay, Pops, let's go. I'd like to leave a message for Dr. Litchfield, please. Would you tell her that I don't understand what's going on, that I know that she recognized me in the street today, and I am beginning to get a little angry. Pardon me? Uh, Molly Dodd, uh, uh, two Ds. Well, um, actually three. Uh, you know what, and uh, don't tell her the part about my getting angry. Just say that I am a little uh, concerned, uh, something like that, uh, or maybe confused. That sounds better, yeah, confused. Um, wait, wait, you know what? Don't tell her anything, okay? You know, I'll tell her myself when I see her. I, but I, uh, hello? Hello? Um. What's going on here? Who's that, that, that woman? It's Sybil Drayton. Well, who's Sybil Drayton? The author. Author of what? Well, I, all those Hollywood sex novels. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, didn't you set this thing up? Set what up? The book signing party. I don't think so. I, uh, well, she's here, <laughs> and her books are selling like hotcakes. Uh, you mean pancakes? No, see, that's an expression, selling like hotcakes. Oh, in New York, they're called pancakes. Uh huh. Well, uh, do you think maybe we should order a couple dozen more? Pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> no, books. Sybil Drayton's new book. Oh, uh, what for? Well, because uh, we've only got uh, one copy left. <laughs> She's much prettier than she appears in the dust jacket, isn't she? Yes, she is. She certainly is. You know, it's very erotic. <laughs> yes, well, you know, personally, I haven't read it, uh, but I'm told that she is famous for her sensuality and her hair. This is garbage. What? Why would anybody buy this stuff? You know, I think uh, if you take this over, Miss Drayton would be more than happy to autograph it for you. <laughs> I, I can't believe we sell this. It's drivel, isn't it? No, but it's hot drivel. <laughs> It's embarrassing. Yes, uh, but it sells books. Her snowy, downy, white alabaster breasts heaved like stallions as his 
stubby fingers twisted in her raven tresses. A low moan emanated from deep within her silky loins. Their lips looked like gladiators battling feral beasts in the pit of the Roman Forum. Franz, Franz, she murmured, Franz, Franz, and then more softly, Franz. I think maybe you have to know all of the characters, especially the one named Franz. <laughs> Makes me blush. Well, you know, I never took you to be a prude. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, I mean, in many ways, it's very endearing, uh, prudism. Suddenly, she became small in his arms. Small and nesting. It was gone. The resistance was gone. And she began to melt in a marvelous peace. And as she melted, small and wonderful in his arms, she became infinitely desirable to him. All his blood vessels seemed to scald with an intense yet tender desire for her, for her softness, for the penetrating beauty of her in his arms. Uh, uh, uh Lawrence, uh, D.H., it's, uh, over there under, uh, L. Hmm. Well, I... I was gonna say exactly the same thing, I mean, except for the scalding blood vessel part, which I forgot. So, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I shouldn't have ordered this. You know, I would bet that this has over 50 calories in it. Nah, it's just butter, sugar, and a dozen eggs. I mean, just don't eat the whipped cream. Oh. <laughs> Detective Nathaniel Hawthorne. You know, I mean, how, why would your parents name you that? Well, they didn't name me Detective. I sort of earned that. And um, when people say it, I look up. So I guess it works. Yeah. Huh. Is this uh, what you thought it would be like? Yeah. I'm having a nice time. Yeah, oh, no, I think it's nice, too. I mean, it's awkward, but it's nice. This is awkward? Well, sort of. I mean, when we first met, we were talking about a real robbery, you know, and then you asked me out for lunch, and then now, uh, here we are. Y you want to know what makes me feel awkward? Mm-hmm. There's a pasty-faced guy over there who keeps staring at you. <laughs> oh, Dennis Widmer. Is that a guess or a positive ID? No, oh, I used to work for him. He's vermin. He's a, a bug. I just hate him. Well, he's on his way over here. Dennis, hello. How are you? Nice to see you. How's the family? I know what you're up to, Molly, and frankly, it diminishes you. What? How vindictive can a person be? Hello? Right. I'm in real estate. Let me just say this. Jealousy is a petty, dangerous, and sometimes deadly trait. Did you see Fatal Attraction? Sure. Need I say more? And as for you, if you persist in spying on me in this neurotic, obsessive manner, you'll leave me no choice but to call in the proper authorities, and I don't think you want that. Ah. Officer, arrest this woman. Dennis, just go away. Will you just step off the planet? I think you should go back to your seat, mister. Could I just see that badge one more time? Good. Uh, could I speak to this woman for uh, just a moment, alone? It's okay. We were lovers. Uh... I'll just talk to him, and then maybe he will go away forever. What? I've got to see you. Dennis, are you crazy? Yes. Crazy with passion. Crazy with missing you. My God, Molly, how long can we torture ourselves like this? How many times in the middle of the night have I called your name? Ignore her. She's nothing. A stopgap, a vent, a valve to let off steam. I'm Mount St. Helens, Molly. I totally lost my mind, and it's your fault. Did my wife just walk in? Oh, Dennis, you know, you really ought to get help. Help? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, meet me tonight at our usual rendezvous, just for, say, a half hour. Is that enough time? I'm going back to my table now. Please do not follow me, or I will have that detective kill you. Look at what's happened to us. Oh. Molly, we've got to put an end to this madness. <sighs> Let's form a suicide pact. I can't. i got to be in Great Nick tonight. It's my daughter's first communion. But I could be late. Or we could go together. Do you like communions? 
Dennis Nellison, these are your options. Either you leave me alone on a permanent basis, or you can be taken out into the alley and beaten to a pulp. Now, what do you say? Or we could go to the Midtown Marriott. <sighs> Kill him. Are you sure? Do it. It's like I'm in kind of a bind here, huh? <clears throat> well, technically, I can't kill you. Really? What if we plea bargain? You pick up the check. Glad to. And don't skimp on the tip. Is 10% okay with you? 15. Did I say 10? I meant 15. stuck there forever because of your stupid skinny New York doorway. Hey, you know, don't blame it on the doorway. This happens to be one of those fat New Jersey chairs that I'm surprised they even allow you to bring over the bridge. Why don't you just hack off the arms? Good idea, Mother. Go get the cleaver. You will not. This is one of my best chairs. I'm only lending it to you for a few years till I get my life together. Huh. You know what? I'm coming in. You can't just leave that thing there. Oh, yes, I can. You know, in fact, I think this is where I actually wanted it to be all along. Why aren't there any men around? Men could force that chair into this room. Ah, yes, but then we'd have a room full of men. I don't think I'm in shape for that right now. You know, it's nice that there's nobody around here who is bitter in any way. Do you think I'm bitter? I'm not bitter. Russ and I are doing beautifully. He should have the house. He built it. And you know, I think his new girlfriend is actually starting to like me. Ah, the family counseling is working. Big strides. Well, at least you have a therapist. Mine disappears down a manhole every time I get within spitting distance. Well, I think it's all very sad. Why do you girls insist on gumming up your lives? Come on, Mom. The 80s are a barrel of monkeys. Yeah, it's a lot of fun hanging around the clinic waiting for the test results. Or casually hooking your date up to a lie detector. If you have a lie detector. If you have a date. And it wasn't all about sex in those days. Yes, well, it's not all about sex today either, Mom. At least not around this bailiwick. Although, I will tell you, I have begun to feel some strange rumblings. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant rumblings? Let's just leave it at rumblings. Oh, no. I myself have no rumblings. I've decided to live the rest of my life alone on a mountaintop, subsisting on berries and assorted pastries. I'm not going to be a party to this disorganized grousing. This is hopeless. I'm going shopping. Even though it is raining, except that I can't get out of here. No, you can't, Mother. You are trapped. Well, we are all trapped. Isn't that what we were just saying? We're just a bunch of angry broads here, you know? Let's castrate something. Just move the chair. We can't move the chair, Florence. The chair is stuck. Well, let's castrate the chair. Are we talking about sex, or are we talking about furniture? Yeah, let a man do this. <sighs> Can't leave it in the doorway like that. Against the rules. Okay, my little sugar plums? Uh, you want me to close the door for you? Well, we haven't decided yet. Well, if you ever make up your mind. Ugh, you know, I hate this chair. Take it back to New Jersey. Dr. Litchfield, hi. Uh, oh, I apologize for just barging in here like this, but I really have to talk to you. This isn't a good time, Molly. Still? Ah, uh, see, look, I mean, I understand that you're very busy, but, you know, there doesn't seem to be anybody here right now. I mean, unless you're treating some kind of invisible patient, you know? I mean, sometimes you do treat people like that. I, you know, kind of like the way that I have been feeling, trying to get a hold of you, trying to make an appointment, uh, if this makes any sense whatsoever. Of course. See, you know, I don't consider myself like an overly aggressive person. You know, well, well, you probably know that, you know, from the sessions that we did have together. Uh, you know, and I don't normally kind of walk into situations where people might despise me, you know, or at least they seem like they do, you know. And I'm sure that this is actually all in my imagination. You know, it's like some kind of twisted, passive, but aggressive thing, uh, which I don't understand. But I know you do, because you are an expert and you... Oh, uh, could I sit down? I really wish you wouldn't. 
Okay, uh, could I stand up then? I don't despise you. I just don't want you here right now. Ah, see, now, that is the part that I don't get. I, uh, I thought I was doing very well. You know, I remember you saying that I was making progress. And uh, you seemed to enjoy having me here. Uh, was there something that I was doing wrong? No. Maybe it was something uh, bad that I said. I, or I didn't say. Ah, now, see, I'm relatively new at all of this. And, you know, if there's, like, some mimeographed sheet of rules that I could study or, like, some book that I could take home and, you know, I could maybe learn to become the kind of patient that we all hoped that I would be and that we thought that I was on the road to becoming until I blew it by doing whatever it was that I did or that I didn't do. I guess we're going to have to have a talk. Sit down, Molly. Oh, no, 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 listen, I don't really want to apply any pressure to you, Nina, and I can come back at any time. Uh, please, sit down. Whoops. I can't talk now. Uh-huh. Oh, well, this is serious business. How are you hanging up without even saying hello, without even seeing who the other party was? Molly, the other... could you shut up for just a minute? Well, I can. I absolutely can. Now it's your turn. Go. You sure? Yes. Good. Now, you may or may not know this, but I've been out of town for the past few weeks. No. I didn't know that. Well, I had no idea. Well, I mean, that explains so many things, you know? Well, I mean, where did you go? Was this like business or pleasure or what? You know, I mean, boy, it's great to get away, isn't it? Molly, I'm going to talk for a few minutes, and it's not going to be easy to say what I have to say, so could you just stop talking? I know. I will. I'm sorry. I... Yes. So... <laughs> Tell me where you went. I went to see my supervisor. Well, Let me answer that for you. Many analysts have analysts of their own that they can check with from time to time when they themselves have problems. I felt the time had come to get to the bottom of a particularly worrisome dilemma. I've been experiencing a certain restlessness lately, an inability to concentrate, which is unusual for me because well, I'm normally a very focused person. My work has been suffering because my mind keeps slipping off track. Now, my supervisor came up with a lot of possible explanations, but in the end, it seemed to be coming back to one thing, one persistent, unsettling truth in my life. I'm in love. Boy. Well, I mean, that's great. <laughs> With you. Uh-huh. I don't know why. I, I hardly know you. I don't usually fall in love with women. I don't think of myself as gay. The truth is, it probably has very little to do with you at all. But it's there, and it's real. And some things you just can't wish away. So here I am telling you something I never wanted you to know, because there's nothing you can do about it, and I wouldn't want you to. There you have it. Well, I really didn't know. I mean, I had no idea. Of course not. So you see, I don't despise you, do I? No. Hello? Oh, hi, Kenny. Long time no see. Ah, you're back in town. Yeah, I've been away myself. I'm back now. 
Oh, some business, some pleasure. When, tonight? Yeah. Italian sounds great. Where in the village? Sure. I love that place. This is the way the world ends. Not with a whimper, but with a lot of banging. Say goodbye to the old iron horse, Miss Dodd. From here on in, you serve yourself. Guess that's what they mean by the me generation. Uh, are you telling me this is goodbye? No, it's just good night. Oh, no, I'll be back. They came crawling to me in their bellies, asked me to stay on in a supervisorial capacity. Oh, so you mean you are going to be the... The doorman. Well, yay, hallelujah. Well, it was either doorman or chairman of Chase Manhattan, but where's the challenge in that? Well, yeah, you would have had to buy some new suits or something. You know, probably the take-home pay would have worked out to be just about the same. Yeah. And the way I figure, these portals need a trusty guardian. Times being out of joint the way they are. Well, now, have you noticed that, too? See, the world seems to me to be at sixes and sevens. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just us. Maybe. That's why it's good we got each other. Two against a storm. Yeah, me and Bobby McGee. <laughs> Did you really think you were going to lose this old campaign of Miss Dodd? Well, I didn't know, Davy. I mean, there you were. You were heading straight out the door in your freshly starched civvies, cutting quite a dashing figure, I must say. A gal could do worse. Considerably. Well, I got to go. Hmm. You want to walk me to the subway? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, Davy, wait. You know, I've got a better idea. Do you like Chinese food? Yeah. Well, I've got more than enough in here. You invite me up for dinner? Yes, I am. Hmm. You aren't going to try anything funny, are you? Well, see, you never know. Guy with a Snoopy lunchbox, kind of irresistible. Yeah, it's always getting me in trouble. I bet. You got egg rolls? Tons of them. Now, I ain't staying the night. Oh, yes. Unless one thing leads to another. Yeah.